Hi, everybody. I'm Wendy Murdoch, and this is Webinars with Wendy. I've been doing a series of webinars now for uh, over a year and a half, and we love to co cover a wide variety of topics. Um, as most of you know, I went on safari. I have a company called Horsing Around International, which is a booking company, and I take people on horseback safari to Kenya. And in September, October, I had two groups that we went over to Kenya, and it was amazing. One of the amazing things was that because of the pandemic, the wildlife has really proliferated because there's fewer people. So today, um, Kayla McGarvey is going to join me. She was on the safari with me on the second safari. And um, I thought it'd be great to bring her along to talk about what it was like to be on safari in the Maasai Mara in Kenya. Welcome, Caitlin. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm super passionate about this and still on cloud nine from the whole thing. So it will be easy <laughs> for yep. me to just go right back there. <laughs> yep, that's what I thought it would be great to have somebody to kind of share the experience with. So Kaylin was in the second group that we had and, and Kaylin was particularly unique in that she brought a deck of cards, actually two decks, and we <laughs> never had anybody bring cards on safari before, but I'll tell you, the evening entertainment <laughs> went to the That's sun right. down and after dinner and after dinner drinks, the cards came out and yeah. um, we had a blast. It was great. Some people uh, stayed up quite late, <laughs> <laughs> which is totally cool. And then the yeah. crew went to bed. There's the open bars, so you know, you could uh, keep yeah. going. And anyway, it was it was super fun. It was really entertaining because at the end we were waiting for our plane to leave the Mara and the plane was a bit late. So we had another game of cards. <laughs> one, last, one last round. <laughs> it was fabulous. So um, Brad's just delivered my iPad, which is awesome because I have um, some favorite photos. I'm just going to see if I can't get it to sync here um, to sync some of my photos. But I have, I have, um, let's see. Um, several thousand photos, um, and I haven't gone through everything yet. So um, if I need to, I can hook up this one, um, but I'm hoping it will sync the file. But if not, not to worry. So what I thought we'd do is um, kind of take you back to when we started the safari. Um, and what I do is I, I have people go on what I call shopping safari day. So everybody flies into Nairobi. And by the way, with COVID, it was really well handled um, because you had your QR code and you were, uh, or it was organized, super organized um, and, and easy. And the Kenyans were really fabulous about wearing masks and protocols. And so you felt really, really safe. And um, Caitlin, I think you'll agree with me. There was very little problems with that other than kind of figuring out the paperwork ahead of time. Yes, just you know, making sure you were organized. <laughs> right. So on Shopping Safari Day, um, I went with the first group and then I stayed on the Mara for the second group. So some of the folks in these pictures were from the first group and we go to Giraffe Center. And the coolest thing about Giraffe Center is that you get to feed pony pellets to the giraffe. And as you can see, we're super close. So Kaylin, you went to Giraffe Center and what was it like for you? Oh, well, a giraffe have always been a creature that I've really like admired. Um, I don't know, they just fascinated me since a child and getting to be up close and personal with some very opinionated giraffes was pretty awesome. Um, the one male, which is what's pictured here, I forget his name, um, but he, he knew exactly what you were up there to do and he was um, very opinionated on how quickly you should feed the pellets <laughs> um, and his tongue was I mean the tongue totally their tongue is so huge and it's black and it's like it's like 18 inches long right yeah it's really yeah cool. and like letting him like he let me scratch behind his ears and it was just like it felt like a pet giraffe and um <laughs> Yeah, I just giggled. <laughs> one of yeah. my one of the other guests took a video of me, and I was just straight giggling. When, it's the when best way to stop to start talk. safari because your their eyeballs are like this big, and you are like right next to them, and you realize you're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you could definitely see their personalities. Um, for the ones that were like residents there for a while, you know, they knew the drill, and you could yeah. see 
kind of the pecking order between them and who told who what it was really oh and there's babies so, so you could get up close to the babies um and so then we yeah. go around and we do some shopping and this is at what's called matte bronze they make incredible bronzes and my favorite part pieces are the footprints of the different wild animals that are cast um i have several but uh, as you can see, they have like a life size uh, elephant that's cast in bronze. This is my first group. So we have lunch, we hang out, we go shopping, we buy belts. Um, the shopping safari day is really fun, but we cap it off with a visit to the elephant orphanage. And um, this is if you have never been up close and personal with baby elephants, um, this is amazing. And we were so fortunate because um, one of my partners over in Kenya, Julie Church, made special arrangements for us to go behind the scenes because basically the orphanage, the evening feeding, which used to be open to the public um, before the pandemic, is now closed to the public. But if you know who to call, um, you can go in for a very special and totally unique visit with the orphans. And so this again is the first group and this is behind the main building. And our guide here is explaining to us just what they do. And it's so phenomenal. So Caitlin, I'm sure that this was your first experience being so up close with baby elephants. Yeah. Yeah, it um, felt like I should be on a movie. Yeah. <laughs> or like, this is not real. <laughs> and um, this is how close we could get. So we were out in the in the back where they were feeding and there's a watering hole and you can get right up and you can pet the elephants, you can mingle with them. Um, and just it's just an incredible experience to be able to um, be this close and it's quite different than in the past years because in the past years um, we have been where they come in for their evening feeding and they come into their stalls um, and then you can pet them once they're in their stalls but we were literally in the herd so as you can see there's one of the handlers and the devotion that these people have to the elephants is just incredible because these babies need constant care 24 7 365 for years before they actually move out to another bigger park so this is actually attached to the to the national park which is right next to the nairobi city um, which is quite amazing actually um and so um when you were there caitlin did you run into the little bad boy i'm sure you did yes um, yes we i have a little video of the bad boy hang on let me just pull this up here and um and uh get this video up so there was one little boy who is um and hopefully this will play well but okay, oh my gosh. he um he wants to be with everybody but he's a little bit pushy <laughs> And so they have to keep him away from the people because he can get a little bit too pushy. So he is protesting the fact that the keepers told him he couldn't come near us. Oh, <laughs> and as you can see, this little boy is quite like the character. He wants to be with us. Yeah. We, we got to hang out with him a little bit. He was on much, he was on a good behavior when we were there. Oh, good, uh, because he, uh, he was definitely not everybody. where he wanted yeah. to kind of push everybody around and you know, um, like, like kids, they know they cannot get that discipline in front of visitors. So uh, teachers, well. <laughs> <laughs> he's definitely protesting. Oh, yeah, he put on quite the show for us. <laughs> um, and he was very funny. And, oh, he is really. <laughs> yeah. That was, you know, to start out on an amazing adventure with that being day one, like it just was like mind blowing, you know, yep. to be down there and to think, oh my gosh, this is like the start of my vacation. Like I could probably be satisfied just going home now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so um, it, it's just really amazing. And what's the good news is, is how few baby elephants they actually had in the orphanage this time so in past years i've been there when they've had over 30 and um that's an amazing number of baby elephants to be trying to take care of um and they had to add extra stalls but the good news is that there was only about 13 when we were there um, which is a significantly lower number but what you have to realize is that um yeah elephant temper tantrum absolutely yeah. um what you have to realize is that 
these babies are bottle fed with a special milk formula for six years. Is it six years, Caitlin? Or I eight think years? So. It was a crazy it's number different. of years yeah. because they'll transfer them as they get to a certain age, they'll transfer them out to these other units that they have in Kenya um, where they are introduced to other orphans. And then ultimately where they meet with wild elephants and eventually they go off and stay with the wild elephants. But they are milk bottle fed for much longer than it would be in um, their natural environment with their mom to make sure that they get all the proper nutrition that they need to be fully healthy and well developed elephants. Um, Oh, I should show that bad boy video to Sharon. That would be really funny. That's a great idea. I'm going to be, um, Sharon's going to be on the show on Monday for Thanksgiving week. We're going to do a little Thanksgiving special. So um, I will show her that video because I think that's a great idea. All right. So let me stop share here and I'm going to get back to. Um, so then what happens is the next day we all fly out to the Mara in a plane and we land in the Mara and um, start our safari journey, which is just truly uh, incredible. Caitlin, uh, you want to tell them what that was like to fly out to the Mara? Um, well, yeah, I mean, I was excited about the whole thing. Like, I felt like a kid at Christmas time. Like, the uh, the the thrill of it all was just overwhelming. But um, kind of getting up in the plane and flying out there in a small plane and being able to just like look down, which was, you know. I didn't quite expect what we had from what I saw until we kind of got on the ground and leaving the airport and getting out to the camp, you know, we saw like a little bit of wildlife and I was like so excited about just seeing a couple, couple creatures, you know, nothing too impressive, but it, at the time it was like, oh, there's, you know, our first animal for the trip. And by the time, by the time we were done with it and the amount of wildlife that we saw, you know, I, I thought about that on our ride in um, to the airplane on our way home to say, wow, like this journey nine days ago was such a different, um, a different experience, you know, getting, getting back to camp from the airport and then from, from camp to the airport back was um, very. It feels like a lifetime, journey. doesn't it? It's like nine days, yeah. but every day is so chock full and you never know what you're going to discover or what's going to happen. And then you look back on, you know, you look back at day three to day one, you're like, was that only two days ago? It Because time takes on a whole new meaning. So this was my home away from home for three weeks. Um, uh, Brad wasn't able to join me, but I had a double bed. <laughs> And um, you have a cowskin on the floor to keep your feet comfy. They bring you hot water to wash your face every morning. And my favorite part is Jumbo coffee or tea because they serve you coffee or tea in your bed, in your tent to wake you up in the morning, which is like, I, I don't even get, you know, it's at home. So that was just yeah. <laughs> uh, fabulous, right? That was one of my favorite things. And of course, this is why we're here. We're here to see the wildlife and um, the I'm not sure what order these pictures are going to be in, but we're just going to kind of roll with it. Um, the zebra were absolutely incredible. Lots of zebra. And, you know, I, I, Kaylin, I, I'm looking back through my pictures. I've got several thousand and it always seems like the, the antelope, the deer like things, the gazelles and stuff get forgotten in the photos because there's so many and you see them so often you kind of forget to take their picture. Um, yeah. But because the thing that we are, most interested in seeing are these guys. Yeah, which and we, got to see, we got to see a lot of those. Well, you saw a lion every single day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or at least pe the people, I think, yeah, we did. Everybody saw a lion every single day. And so, uh, you know, it was not unusual to just go out and see these guys. And um, yeah. these, the cats are, um, I've been going since 2008. So this was my ninth and 10th group on safari. And the difference in the lion population from the beginning to now is so incredible. They are doing really well. We saw so many cubs um, and I have yeah. cub pictures here, um, but so many cubs and uh, prides with two male lions, prides with four male lions, just, just an amazing um, resurgence because, because in large part due to the conservation measures that they've taken on the Mara. So in 2008, 
they hadn't formed what's known as conservancies. The Maasai were living on their land. We are camping on Maasai land. So 30% of the fees actually go to the conservation and to the Maasai because we're on their land. And um, they made an agreement in 2010 to move their manadas, their homes, back off the out of the middle of their land and more to the perimeter. And as a result, the game has flourished like crazy. Um, and so one safari, it was in 2010, we did not see a lion till the very last day because Karanja, one of our crew was driving back to pick up more supplies and spotted a lion, but we hadn't seen any lion. And now you can't go a day without seeing them, without seeing yeah. cubs, without seeing males, without seeing a just amazing game. Um, and Caitlin, I'm sure that you would agree with that, that it was just, just seeing these guys um, in their native environment is just so incredible. Yeah, yeah, it was incredible. Um, I thought the one morning when we saw we saw them, they had just made a kill and we went up to see them and that was like my first ever being like up close and personal and they were getting up from finishing and like, you know, five feet from the vehicle. And it was just like, oh my gosh, is this really happening? Um, and then by the end of the, the trip, it was, you know, you could relax about the subject of the fact that there's a lion five feet from the vehicle. <laughs> So, so there's just a few. Are you seeing the pictures I'm going through just to make yep. sure? Okay, great. Yeah. So, you know, this was just a, a pride of lion. And so as you can see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, at least six cubs. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that's a, a full size lion. But, you know, their their tummies are full. They're chilling out. And you um, we, we are in a vehicle at this moment. We are not on horseback when we're seeing the lion like this. Um, yeah. But that's the thing is they are not afraid of the vehicle. So you can get incredibly close um, in the vehicle. And so what's so fantastic about the safari that I take people on is that we have this combination of horseback and vehicle. So if we see something amazing and the people are out on a ride, we get back to camp, we load them in a vehicle, we tell there's cheetah. <laughs> And we buzz out to see the cheetah or the leopard um, so that everybody can enjoy what we're seeing. And um, it's so it's it's a really special and unique kind of safari because it's it's boutique. Um, yeah. And so um, things can change and everybody's cool because basically you're out there with your guests and your crew and the crew numbers. Uh, about 23, 24 members in the crew. There's mess crew, there's horse crew, and there's um, tent crew. And everything's packed up and shipped out. And then we are this little pod, this unit that travels across the Mara uh, in our mobile tented camp. And we move camp depending every two to three days. Now, one of the things that happened in Caitlin's safari was that we had this really heavy rain. And we knew if we went to the next camp, right away that that would, it was on the Mara River, it would be really difficult for the crew to set up. So we opted to stay at my favorite camp, which is I think of as Lion Camp, um, an extra day. And we were so blessed because we saw a lion kill, we saw lion mating. <laughs> yeah, we did see a lot that, that day after. Yeah, just yeah. amazing. So there's the Mara River, that was our next camp. But let me see if I can, um, find some of those pictures uh, of, uh, hang on, I just have to get back over. I think you were say, stating about the um, fact that you can kind of do both. You can ride, you can ride in the vehicle. I, even though I did ride most of the time, I, I love the fact that that was an option, you know? So it didn't feel like people were pressured to do one or the other. They could simply do whatever they wanted or whatever they felt, you know, suited them at the moment. So I, um, I really kind of like that that feature of the whole trip, and it and it really didn't even matter what like, no nope. staff was cool with it. Yeah. Yep. Everybody, um, you could hang in camp. You could go uh, in the vehicle. You could, um, you know, you could hang with the crew. I mean, the crew was fabulous because you could just simply um, hang out with them. And on the last day, that's what I did. I hung out with the crew, and they're they they're like family. Um, once you've been there once, basically 
they're part yeah. of yeah you're part of it. I family. felt like I left a whole other family over there it was so, so just to get an idea of how close that we um would be in the vehicle you can see that here's this lion here and there's some lion right there oh, fuzzy picture there, there. we go yeah, um, the and they were on a kill and that was the morning of we would have moved camp that day we decided to stay and so uh, we got to see these lions on a kill and then we got to see them um, uh, and the, <laughs> this guy was hiding in the grass um, yes, he and then he walked down and some of these pictures are uploading into the computer which is why they're a little fuzzy but they'll they'll sharpen um, and <laughs> That was fun. And oh, I just, you have them all in a random order. They are so random right now. But yes, they are. Just so that you can oh. see, we are on horseback. And I think one of the things that anybody who comes with us, the, they, they have a hard time with the fact that we let the horses graze. Um, and it takes, um, if you're used to not letting your horse graze, it, it's a habit you don't even know that you have to restrict them but it is so important to let the horses graze and there's a couple reasons for that um one is that if the horses are grazing then the other animals go oh you're grazing and we're grazing and so everybody's grazing and we're all cool because they're herbivores and so that head down posture munching eating grass is a all is well sign to the game so we are much th less threatening if we allow our horses to graze. Um, the other is that this is a hard trip for these guys. These horses were out there for five weeks and yes, they have hay and yes, they have grain, but they need to get as much nutrition as possible. And so the grass is amazing and we allow them to graze to get more calories. So um, Caitlin, I know that that's probably something that you found a little awkward at first, just because we are so trained not to do that, right? Yeah, I, well, my, I mean, it's like instant for them the minute you stop their <laughs> eating. So yeah. and you can't, you can't really argue with them, but it, it was just like, come on, just let me settle in for what we're doing and then we'll let you eat. But once, once I got my horse and I got on the same page, it was like second nature then at that point. Um, and we, we much, we jived better <laughs> with the subject. Um, and so but I, most endurance horses, that makes sense. Yeah, they are endurance horses. That's exactly right. Yeah, they really um, are. And there's a really interesting mix of horses. There are what's known as a boa ped, which is a South African breed crossed with Frisian so that they have bigger bone. Um, this is Iceni here, and she is a Percheron Frisian cross. Um, they have some thoroughbred, they have a um, couple of Appaloosas, and they even have a quarter yeah. horse. So there's a huge, uh, nice variety of horses and of different sizes. And whenever we ride out, we have our guides with us. That um, This is James, he's Maasai, and he is always at the back of the line, making sure that there's that we're safe. And um, Dito came out to ride one of the horses that day and they are pointing at um, some game that we spotted. And I will see if I can find the, the, the photo of what they're pointing at. Uh, oh, well, this is just another, this is after we were pointing at the game, but- Oh, I didn't get to see that picture. I love this picture. Yeah. So you can that see awesome the, picture. The, the, we ride past Ellie's and Lion, but, the thing that's important is our guides are so experienced that they never put us in a position that um, we're concerned. And the horses, um, where they live at home, they're living on, a, I think it's 4,500 hectares. It's a huge park. And there's everything now, including lion, where they live. So the horses are very familiar with game. And um, so that's really great. It's not like they just go out on safari and meet the game. Yeah. They are living with game every day. So they go out and then they call them in for dinner and they come in, they check the horses and they go out. And that way the horses are really comfortable with the game. Um, and of course, just, <laughs> <it's a little laughs> um, this was the day we drove out to the Mara Triangle. And if you've never seen a baby elephant try to learn how to use its trunk, um, it is really, really funny. Um, each group is, it's nine days. Um, and so it's um, nine amazing days. And then of course we have the um, shopping safari in the beginning. And some people actually either um, 
add on, they, a couple of people went to see the gorillas before we went on riding safari or afterward, they might go to Lamu to enjoy the beaches. So, um, but the actual safari itself is nine days. Um, this, is, this is just one of my little um, artsy pictures. <laughs> that was just the heat coming off the ground. And these guys, they're called the cranes oh, of wow, Africa, the, the um, giraffe, they're just um, huge. And they sometimes stand on the top of ridges. And um, uh, so that was a great picture. Now, one of the things, of course, that we have while we're on safari is the Mara Mart. <laughs> Yeah, I spent a lot so, of money there. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so the crew, um, uh, their families do beadwork and carving. And then when we have the Maramart, they spread out their blankets. And they you can see here, there's like salad bowl things and belts and bangles and um, all kinds of trinkets to bring home. And so it's great because this is just another way that we help support the crew. Um, one of the things that's so amazing is that you might not know who, who your crew is in their community, but very often they might be a chief or an elder or um, an important person in their um, tribe. And so they'll go back to their families and the money that they earn through the tips and through their wages will go back and feed families. Um, it's a much more um, uh, familial system over there than what we're used to here. And it's just really quite incredible. Um, and the crew is, um, Caitlin, tell me about the crew because the crew is so amazing. The crew, honestly, like you said, they are family. And I mean, I, I had a hard time leaving, you know, cheering up because it, it really did feel like, first of all, they took amazing care of you. Like any want any need, it was like instant, super friendly, um, but it was like very easy and comforting to be around them, I guess I would say. Um, and again, the care, like you, you got treated like royalty. It felt very, I know. very You're so familiar spoiled, to me. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, um, I, it was hard for me at first to kind of adjust to um, how like, they take care of you. Well, they are yeah, there to take care of you. They, they, do. they do our laundry. They cook all our meals. If we need something, it happens. I mean, and they and they think of things prior to you thinking of things. Yep. I was like, oh, well, yeah, that's super handy. Thanks. You know, um, they definitely are good at their job and really make they make a huge part of the the time spent Excellent. in camp the experience, you know, like and, they really and a number of them are Maasai. So, yeah. you know, yeah. this is where this integration of the Maasai who, um, you know, they're, they, they have allowed their land to be put in these conservancies, but then also they become guides, they become staff. And so there's this whole community interaction. And so um, there are a number of the crew that are Maasai. And so one night they put on their traditional Maasai um, uh, um, shukas and their beads and they come and they sing for us and the Maasai voices are just gorgeous and it's a little fuzzy this picture but I think you get the the feeling of it that they come around the fire and they sing and they're such um joyous people they're they're happy and it's yeah. infectious you can't help but um smile <laughs> and just be you know change your mood instantly yep and then of course just so that you can see that we um we eat really well. This was breakfast. And so we have uh, China and we have coffee, eggs Benedict on our brunch day, toast, eggs, porridge, uh, golden syrup. Um, no one starves. <laughs> yeah, no, the food was over the top. Yeah. Um, like I said, I, I that was probably the most like catered to experience I've ever had in my entire life. In the middle of the bush, no less. <laughs> like, how does this happen? Oh, <laughs> so so on a move day, we, the camp is yeah. packed up, and we ride, and then we stop for lunch, and then we have to stop for lunch for a few hours to allow the crew to get to the next camp and set it up. So this is Caitlin actually conducting her uh, card play under an umbrella because it started raining when we stopped for our lunch on the move day, but that's okay. She kept us entertained. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, 
That is great. I had uh, that under control the whole the whole. Oh weekend. yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And here you can see we're we're just it was raining, but of course we bring raincoats. And the beauty is that you know the rain doesn't last a long time. And of course we're um, five thousand feet. So, you know, people always ask about the bugs. Well, there aren't any bugs really because we're at 5,000 feet and uh, up to 6,000. And so it's, it's really amazing. There are more mosquitoes at my house here in Virginia than there yeah. are on safari. Um, but this is the camp we were riding. Definitely through. a misconception yeah. with the bug situation. <laughs> yep. This is the Mara River and it's home to a, a lot of hippo. And right now this river looks super peaceful and you see one or two little hippo over here. And there's about 200 in there <laughs> easily in yeah. that little bend. Um, and so- That was my favorite camp. <laughs> yeah, it's a great I camp. I love hippo camp. And, um, wow. Here's where this is, um, we drove from, from hippo camp and we went into the Mara Triangle. So this is the vehicle crossing the Mara River. Um, and we had our uh, Mendazis. Do you remember our Mendazis? Mm -hmm. um, yes, very tasty. Mendazis are um, uh, Kenyan donuts. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, all about yeah. the food. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I, uh, like just seeing these pictures makes me feel like, like, excited and heartbroken that it's over all at the same time. So as we drove in the, the troops of baboons, um, you know, again, it's another one of those uh, animals that you see so many of them, you forget to take a picture, but they were right up alongside the road. And we don't have to worry about them in our, in our camp. Um, they don't um, bother us, um, largely because we are moving. And so, you know, we're only there for a couple of days. But here's where we entered into the um, Mara Triangle, and it's a little more wild, and it goes all the way down to the Tanzanian border. So um, we drove, we spent the day driving into the Mara Triangle, um, and it, to see more really interesting game. And I'm just gonna here's uh, oh here's your group. Here we go. <laughs> Here we are. Yep. Oh hanging out at the at the gate so it's um uh you you have a paid to enter and then you go out and um there's just we saw here's ellie's here we saw um herds of 80 elephant yeah it was and, impressive and um and that's, that, that, the the amount of wildlife was just unbelievable unbelievable so when we were we, in the golden drive. we drove up a bit so if you've ever seen the movie out of africa where they bury finch hatton um he was buried on the gong hills which is close to nairobi so when they went to film the movie it was too overpopulated so they went up to the escarpment and so the view here is halfway up the escarpment looking out onto the mara um and he was the movie was filmed from the top so literally we're out where out of africa was filmed and um, the, the outfitters that we use actually supplied Meryl Streep for the movie um, out of Africa. Um, and that was just, you know, a long time ago, those horses aren't around anymore, but, um, but that's who our company is that we go with. So we hop in the vehicles and we drive down the road. And um, of course <laughs> the zebra love to be in the middle of the road. Um, and there's wildebeest. Oh, oh wait, this is this is yeah, um, that's yeah the migration. So we we on the first safari to find the migration, we had to drive way down uh, through the Mara Triangle near the Tanzanian border. But that day that it rained, where we didn't move camp, one of the magical things about that rain was it brought the migration back up into the Mara, and so all of these little specks that look like little black dots those are wildebeest and they are everywhere and so we wound yeah. up driving up onto this um little bit of a high point and look down onto the migration and um this is just a panoramic of we were by this tree and we looked out and there were um wildebeest as far, really, as, far as, as you could see i could see Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. We were probably the estimate was that we were looking at about a million and a half to two million with wildebeest. 
because it went all the way out beyond where the eye could see. And you, there's just thousands and thousands and thousands of wildebeest. And so we were so lucky. And um, even, the, even our, our guides were saying that this was probably the most spectacular view of the migration that they had ever seen. Yeah, and I felt so, so blessed, like we were just and honored and yeah. admired. It was mind blowing. And they just, like I said, they went beyond anything you can see here. Um, it was just an amazing, um, let's see if I have, I know I have some other pictures of it here. Um, the, a camera cannot capture yeah. the migration. It's just, this one needs to download. It'll take a second and then I'll bring it up. Um, but you just, you can't fathom it and a, and a camera cannot capture what that is like to see the migration in it, all of its glory and all of its fullness. And uh, two more seconds and this picture will be uploaded and it won't be fuzzy. I don't wanna show you the fuzzy one, um, but it was just totally stunning. Um, and like I said, I've been there 10 times for 10 safaris we had one other safari where it was like driving through a cattle feedlot. There were so many wildebeest, but in that safari, we were on the same level. So you couldn't see the vastness of it. You could just like go, okay, we can't drive through this because there's too many wildebeest all around us. Um, but here we had that vantage point of a little bit of height. And so we could look out onto the migration and it was, truly stunning and i'm waiting for this picture to load and it's like, that was definitely probably like close like one of the top three moments of the whole trip right there so what was your number one and number two <laughs> well um my my number one when it came like my number two was two days my two days that i spent outside that was just a very really neat experience that i had but um, my number one was when we were riding and, um, Sean had said, we were going to going through some thick bush and, you know, we kind of had to keep our voice down so that we didn't spook the wildlife and that we had kind of a idea of where they might be at if we were to get close. And we are, and I don't remember what day it was. Like you said, they all blend together, but we were kind of coming through and we were up on this little, this little ledge and, once we crested that ledge, we spooked, I think it was like probably seven, seven or eight elephant up from like a mud bath slash spa oh, moment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. And it was like, you know, we startled them. Um, but to be able to like see them kind of get really alert and then kind of take off after that moment where like you're kind of creeping through the woods, you know, with an adrenaline rush of like, oh, you know, there might be, there might be something in here. Um <laughs> it was just it was a very thrilling moment for me where the adrenaline was high which i'm i'm slightly addicted to that rush a little bit um and then to see that kind of happen as we came out of the bush was really a spectacular moment for me um and then this here was just amazing and you know our guides are are very cautious they're not going yes. to put us in in any danger there They've lived out there their entire life. They're super experienced. Yeah, yeah. They're very knowledgeable and they're so amazing at reading game. And they have eyes that can see, OMG. It's like yeah. um, what they can spot. And you're like, where, where? And they're like there. And it's like so far off. I know. Um, I really had no idea how they saw half of those things because they would point it out. They'd give me like four or five descriptional pieces of the picture. And I'm like, I'm still not seeing it. Yep. <laughs> Um, but, but yeah, this, I, I was, I was very impressed with their skill set, uh, for the, the, the awareness that they had of their surroundings and for the animals. I did not ever feel uncomfortable, um, at all with the guidance that we were being given. You'll appreciate this picture. <laughs> yes. So here's oh, my oh my God. <laughs> And here's our, here's Felicia, our fearless leader, and her dad joined us on this. So he was part of the gang of cards. 
Um, and yes, he, he sat there for 20 minutes because he just oh. absolutely couldn't see the lion, which I don't know if you can actually see that. Yeah, there they are. Yeah, it was right up. Yeah, right, right up there. In that hole. That's yeah. where the lion is. But he kept looking other places. And so we kept trying to help him see the lion. And um, and <laughs> so I thought it was a that picture, Caitlin. <laughs> It was it was painful. I was just like, we'll find another lion. Let's keep moving. Yep. But they're so dedicated. It's like, if you haven't seen it, we're going to help you see it. Um, and so yeah. we were riding through this little valley. And what you have to realize, too, and I think that there's a huge misunderstanding about um, um, nature. And we've been taught this thing about predator prey in an American sanitized version. And when you get on safari, you realize that so much of what people have explained to you really isn't how it's it's actually. Oh, hi, Patty! Hi, Patty! <laughs> I just realized she's there. Oh, is um, Patty on? Patty's on. Oh, um, hey, Patty. Um, it's so you know we're taught oh we're the predator and they're the prey, but the most dangerous animal in Africa is an herbivore and it's a hippo. And hippos kill more people every year, 3,000 people a year, than lion do. Um, and the other thing that I always tell people is that we never get out of the vehicle, okay? Because if we get out of the vehicle, we are the prey, <laughs> you know? And there are stories, which I won't share with you, but I have heard about where people were, um, didn't recognize the danger they were in the minute you pop a door. Um, as long as you are in the vehicle, they don't see the vehicle as a threat. Literally, I have I can show you pictures of cats walking right past the vehicle. But the minute you pop yeah. that door, it it completely changes things because there's no formal hunting in Kenya, which is one of the fabulous things about Kenya. Um, but you know, in that vein too, the, it's like there's not killing every two minutes. Um, you know, National Geographic has brought us amazing images, but at the same time. Um, it's a little misconceiving because it seems like that's happening constantly and that's really not happening very often, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, because one wildebeest will feed a family for quite a while. And so when you look at the numbers of uh, 1.5 to 2.5 million wildebeest and a lion, um, the, the numbers are, are very small. And so 99% of the time, it's peaceful. 99% of the time, the, the animals are grazing or sleeping, the lions sleep a lot. And when their bellies are full, they're sound asleep. So um, when we find lion during the day, um, typically it's hot. They've gone like that under the bushes to get away from the flies and their bellies are full and they're just gonna hang out. And then they'll get active and start to hunt around dusk and into the night. So we hear a lot of lion at that lion camp at night, but um, we're, it's so rare to come across uh, a kill and it's even rarer to watch a kill. Like I've never watched a lion kill in 10 safaris over 12 years. Um, we've yeah. seen, I do have a few pictures here of, um, hang on, uh, of somebody munching on something. Um, but it's not, it's not, you know, like I said, National Geographic, it's amazing what they show us, but it's very condensed um, to get those kind of that kind of film. They're out there for a really long time. And, you know, just like everybody, you got to eat, <laughs> you know, we eat amazing yeah. food and they need to eat um, and feed their families. And the fact that there are so many lion out there tells you about the health of the entire ecosystem, that they're thriving, the wildlife are thriving. And this is all sort of the, the natural thing. You eat, you sleep, you procreate. <laughs> um, so let's see, I've got um, two, two, two. Um, there, the other fellows and nothing is wasted. Uh, hang on, I gotta pause this and start, start share and reshare. Um, there's always somebody to come along and pick up the scraps. So this hyena has snagged, oops, snag this this bone away from um, uh, silverback jackal and we get we got to watch the lion and the silverback jackal and the hyena all interacting over this kill and it then was, we had the eagle too flying. oh yes I actually i have that picture so let me yeah. um, pause share for a second and go find that picture 
because that was that, was, that was a really cool moment to yeah. see that see yeah that and that was like that was you know what maybe a mile not even no probably like half oh it was half a mile from camp, camp. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why I love that camp so much. Um, yeah. Uh oh, I know I have that picture. They're not in a good order. Um, but we'll just we'll get back to that picture because I have that. Um, th these are also this is one of the favorite things that people love to see is the giraffe. <laughs> They're so. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let me yeah. see if I can find that eagle picture really quickly. Um, and then we, we can't forget the horses. So Caitlin, tell them a bit about the horses. Well, I was thoroughly impressed with those horses. And I think the way their lifestyle is like it, it leads them to be great safari horses because they're, they're in the wildlife, um, all the time, but I enjoyed my mount. They paired me up with the perfect horse, honestly. We, ha we had a blast together. Um, and I, I think the diverse type of horses that they have, you know, they have some that are really chill, content to be at the back of the group, really low key, easy peasy type horses to ride. And then they have more, it's like, well, if you like to get up and go, like you have ones that want to move out. Uh, Geronimo was, was my yep. gelding that I rode. Um, and we, you know, he, we fit each other quite nice. Um, but I overall, like their brains are incredible for what they're doing. Um, I mean, they're just, they're, they're machines out there and, and what they're expected to do is hard work and they do it really well. And for the fact that, you know, they don't, they're kind of pushing through different people in their five week work, work spell here. Um, I was impressed with their ability to to handle different riders as well i yeah i mean sometimes i i came home and my my thought process was a little tricky because you know i'm dealing with my school horses at our facility you know and it's like guys really you're freaking out over that little rabbit and you have nothing to really worry about you know i i was a little my compassion for my own horses after that trip suffered a little because my tolerance was like come on there's really not a lion out there ready to eat you. <laughs> anyway, oh, I was I was very impressed. Um, somebody's asked what camera I use. I use my iPhone sometimes in the vehicle. I use a little Canon power shot when I'm on horseback so that if I lose it, I don't care. And then I have a Nikon D500, which is what I took this photo with. And this one is, this is the Eagle. Um, you can see it's not perfectly in focus, but I'm still really happy with it um, because yeah, it captures the moment. Here's your hyena. Here's your silverback jackal. And guess who gets the spoils um, that the eagle took off with it? And um, I'm just, oh, I have another one of that shot. Yep. Uh, let's see. Share. There we go. And uh, I don't think he dropped oh, it. No. Oops. Nope, it's still there in his claws. Um, yeah. Bird shots, I'll tell you, bird shots are the hardest thing to get because they move. You know, that's one thing you start to realize is um, these guys, these guys are easy to photograph <laughs> because they hang out and they just sit in the grass and have a great time and um, occasionally they move, but they're large and, and um, relatively lumbery compared to trying yeah. to take pictures of birds, but this was, uh, Patty, I'll appreciate this one. Um, so one of the things that we were um, treated to was those same lions that we saw with the kill and the eagle and the, and the um, silverback jackal and the, and the uh, hyena, then they decided it was time to make new lions. <laughs> so she had just come into estrus and these guys got it on, what, like four times in, in a half yeah, an hour. Exactly. I was, I was, um, yeah, it was surprising. <laughs> so, um, and in the beginning, they were quite aggressive because when she's, he's done, she 
just snarks at him and then rolls onto her back because apparently lion sperm is lazy. And if they don't roll onto their back, it doesn't really get where it's supposed to go. So wow. um, it's very typical to see this, yeah, this kind of behavior. Yeah. And then um, they continue for a couple of days, <laughs> um, but you know, it was obvious when they started getting tired, um, there was less uh, uh, um, energetic activity. So now yeah. here's the shot. This is when I go in the vehicle because I love to get these kind of shots. So here are our riders. Here's our crew here. Um, and that's Helen. And then here's our male lion. And here's our elephant butt. Now <laughs> <laughs> that sums up the whole trip pretty much. <laughs> you have to realize the perspective. We're quite far away and we've already spotted these lion. Our, our uh, vehicle crew, um, Pat, uh, Peter had already spotted the lion. They had already had uh, something to eat and they'd already made love. And so at this yeah. point, it's time to go find a bush and just lay down and rest for the day. And so that's where um, the, our guides are so amazing because they, they understand the behavior of the game and they can understand that, you know, we can be out there on a horse because this lion is already tummy full, ready for a nap. Um, and yes, we have to be careful. Yes, they're amazing at spotting the lion. It's incredible what they can see. Um, and yes, we take precautions. Like I'm in a vehicle, that's why I can get this shot. Um, and um, they're on horseback and the guides are totally aware. Yeah, this was priceless. Um, of where the game were and what precautions we needed to take. So, um, um, and here's just another. Um, let's see if we share. Now we get the front of the elephant. Um, and you can see here's our riders, right? And they're they're in the scene behind there and the elephant and the lion. So that's one of the things that that's so amazing is that when you're on horseback, you are you know on the land. Um, and uh, here they are uh, watching, like <laughs> they're watching right in the distance, there's our group and they're quite far away. And of course you can see, one of the things you can see in this picture is just how relaxed the horses are in this environment. This is not something you would take your horse on. In fact, you can't. Yeah, no way, um, no way. <laughs> but <laughs> horses are super relaxed and the, the lead horses typically um, like Mushali, who is the top lead horse, he is so cool. He is like so, he is so observant and so aware of his environment. And you just watch Mishali and you know what's going on. You know, is there yeah. something to worry about? Is everything cool? You know, where's what's going on? Um, and they're just amazing, um, these horses, because this is how they live. All right, Caitlin, what else? Oh, that we, we're cruising through time. What do we need to tell them? Um. It's the ride of a lifetime. <laughs> yeah, it's an adventure. Um, you know, and I think now out of the whole, I'm I'm kind of somebody that I, I'm addicted to adventure personally. Um, and I was out of my comfort zone the whole time. Well, most of the time, but I would never felt unsafe. And that's what I want, like that's what I recharged my family with when when I told them what I was doing. It's like I, I felt safe and it was like the thrill of, of being in a place. I mean, honestly, this ride was my dream, like since I was a little girl. Um, so the excitement and the thrill and all of it was just so overwhelming. And, and that kind of put me out of my comfort zone, but the knowledge, the, um, kind of the routine, the flow that, that, whole trip presented was like, yeah, these people know what they're doing and Absolutely. they know how to do their job and they know how to do their job really, really well, which made some of these like, oh my gosh, there's a lion right there. <laughs> some of those moments, like so reassuring, like, well, I can enjoy it and embrace it, but I'm not hitting like a panic button. Does that make sense? Yeah. We, yeah. You know, because it is a push. It is, um, uh, I can remember my first safari um, having those feelings of like, I am, there, there's nothing here that I know. 
Oh, there's there's nothing familiar. <laughs> that was it. Um, nothing and, familiar. <laughs> um, but, you know, and that's one of the things about going back, you know, if I, we have people that have gone back now with us a few times. And when you go back, it's just the routine of the routine of the camp, um, setting up camp, moving camp, having your laundry done, kind of getting in the rhythm of camp and what it's like to be in true safari where you're in mobile tented camp. And then, then there's the piece of um, getting to know your horse. And that's really, um, you know, for a lot of people who aren't used to riding a lot of different horses, that's a huge piece at first to just find that comfort in riding a horse you don't know. Um, and then it's the, the game and just, um, so we were, we were uh, in the vehicle uh, and stopped at this pool where the hippo and the elephant were, by the way, and that's um, where we got that shot. Um, yeah, there's a lot. Yes, Mary Dale did go with us. She had a fabulous time. Mary Dale, um, who we Rhonda ten knows. Ten buddies, Mary Dale and I. Yep. Here, ten buddies. Um, and then just the diversity. And I think that that's one of the things that you, you, you can't imagine the diversity and the uniqueness. Like having been there as long as I have, there's always something that happens that I've never seen before. And um, I got to find my sunset, but just on the last evening, there was a flock of cranes, these um, crown cranes that flew over in a flock of 40. And our guide said he had never in all of his years, and he's been out there 40, 50 years, seen such a huge flock and they were honking. And so there's always something new. There's always something different. There's always something around the corner that you, you might not have seen before. Um, and yeah, so and, and to even know what, like, for me, it's like, you didn't even know what to expect. Like you were so kind of caught off guard in this beautiful way, you know, every like two hours I felt like <laughs> sometimes it was every 10 minutes. Um, but, and, you yeah. know, we were so fortunate to see Cheetah. Um, and so we saw this Cheetah and she had two little cubs and the little cubs are right there. There's the two little cubs. Um, yeah. And then we followed them in the vehicle and she uh, walked down a dirt track and walked right past our vehicle. Um, and there's, I'll just show you this to see. It's a little blurry, but there she is with her babies and here we are following her. Patty, I'll know that shot, right? And um, to be able to follow them and watch them. And, you know, so often we've seen other people on safari and they're like, they drive up in their little vehicle and they go click, click, click and get their picture and take off. But that's yeah. really not, that's like being removed from safari. What our crew does is we'll sit there and we'll wait and we'll watch and we followed these cheetah we waited for her and then she decided to move her babies and we followed them and um to really experience uh a much deeper and richer uh way to see the game it's not just you know click and shoot um and here you can say. see the edge of our vehicle and they're they don't see the vehicles a threat because there's no hunting and they go right past and it, Patty does remember this. This was so fun to watch these guys. Um, and I've been meaning to get my pictures up, um, but I've been a little uh, sidetracked with doing um, expos, which I have another one coming up uh, in December. So I'm still working on curating my pictures, um, but I'm really hoping to get them up where people can enjoy them and, uh, and see just how beautiful it is there so one point with you know really embracing the moments spent with the animals um I really appreciated that you know because our guides were so knowledgeable you could really ask like whatever question came into your mind at that moment and hanging out and just really embracing that moment to me was very special um when we were out there the few vehicles we did see it was literally like they'd show up for five minutes take a few pictures and then they were off again. And, you know, five minutes later, something really interesting happened. And it's like, well, they totally missed out on that because it was like, it felt like it was more real life where it's like, go, 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 go. in those other vehicles where we had the fortunate ability to just kind of hang out. And really our only priority was the sea game and to experience the wild. 
like there was no rushing it. And that's what I appreciate, especially coming from my lifestyle of just like slowing it down and just being in the moment and embracing such a different world. Quite frankly, I've never experienced anything in my entire life like I did on that trip. And yeah. I'm getting goosebumps and <laughs> just thinking about it because it was it was a huge trip for me. And the amount that I got out of it I, I couldn't even have fathomed what I took away from that trip. Yeah. And, yeah. and so. so this was on our, on our last evening, we yeah. uh, this is had gone out and sat there and we watched the sun go down and um, set on the Mara, which the sunsets are really, really incredible. And these trees are trimmed by the giraffe. So the topiary is totally natural. Um, the giraffes reach up and trim all the branches. Um, and so to me, this is like the epitome of the Mara is the sun over the Mara with the trim trees and um, truly amazing. I'm really fortunate to be able to go back. And, um, and of course we, we're, my company Horsing Around International, we are planning our trip for September, 2022. Um, and we do have spaces available. So if you're interested in joining us on a ride of a lifetime, just email me at wendy at wendymurdoch.com. You can go to murdochmethod.com to the shop and free, download the free safari guidebook. We have not updated it yet for 2022, but it'll give you a really good idea of, of everything you need to know. It's a 60 something page um, guidebook that yeah. Brad's put together, tells you all about um, the environment and the plugs and things you need to bring and all of that sort of stuff and our crew who we go with and the horses. So um, if you're interested in joining me for 2022, just pop me an email, wendy at wendymurdock.com or go to my website and, um, and fulfill your bucket list dreams. Yeah. Yeah. Highly so, recommend it. Thanks, Caitlin, for joining me. It's been great to go through this. I, um, it made me go back and dig through my pictures and now I need to go back and, and dig through some more and, and um, get them up. We've been planning to do a website. It's just been a little bit delayed due to a number of other um, things going on. <laughs> Never a dull yeah. moment around here. No. Um, <laughs> and Patty, I'm so glad you joined us. Um, and we, it's great to to know that you're you're out there. And I love that picture of you and your sister from the gorillas that you posted on Facebook. So. Um, Thanks everybody. And next week we'll have one webinar with Sharon Wilsey um, for Thanksgiving week. So stay tuned. I'll post that email on Sunday. Um, you can always join the email list to know who the webinar guests are going to be by going to murdochmethod.com and signing up for the, the weekly email newsletters. Thanks, Kayla. It's great to see you. And thanks, thanks everybody for joining us. So reminisce about Safari and oh, uh, yeah. the dream alive. It was lovely. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye.